This is how this guy delivers our food. This is crazy. On the horse, bro? This is insane. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from the beautiful seaside city of Lourdes. This place is gorgeous. Look at this. The water right here. We have the boardwalk. And today, I'm excited because I'm actually driving back to Tirana and I'm doing a lot of stops on the way. We're going to like an ancient site. Then after that, we're going to a monastery. And then we're finally going to end up with some delicious lunch at a secret place. And yeah, so we're starting off right here at my hotel, Bologna Hotel, boutique hotel right here on the Lungo Mare right in front of the water. This is like the beginning of the boardwalk. They have 40 rooms. They have a great breakfast. They also have this terrace, right? So if you want to at night or during the day, you can just chill here, relax, see the water. And over here, come look, look. In the port area, there are a lot of, a lot of boats that do private tours, but also tours in a group. And they go all to Karabun Island, which is in front of, uh, in front of us. So it takes about one hour ride to go there. They have party on the boat. So it depends, you want a private one, relaxing, you can take a small one. If you want to chill life, to party, you can take a big one. All right guys, let's go have some breakfast in the hotel and then get ready for the journey. So here we are at breakfast and it's a buffet, you know, buffet style. You can also order omelets if you want, but I'm just going simple, right? Some cheese, sausage, we got some eggs and we have a delicious cake. This is the best. Mmm. Wow. You guys, your dopios are like quadruples here. Quadruples. So yeah, this is the dining area, as you can see. Buffet style, you can order some coffee, get some juice, water, and they have a few different things. So they have a lot of butter, they have eggs, they have a lot of fruit, tons of fruit. Huge variety of fruit here. And yeah, I mean, how was your night last night, good? A quiet night and uh, the view from the window, looking over the sea is perfect. I think we both need coffees to wake up. Mm. This is something I learned to travel in the Balkans. It's so good like this, it's the best. Balkan breakfast. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. So and sweet. This hotel has 40 rooms, like I said before. They have twins, they have queens, and they have a suite. And most of them look over the sea, which is amazing. Location is location, you know? That's the best thing about staying here, is that literally at night you can just walk around. We walked last night all the way down to Boulevard to have some dinner. It was perfect. I'm gonna enjoy this breakfast. I'll see you in a second. And this is my room, right? So, open space, got a king size bed, have a desk over here, super nice bathroom, and the view. The view, look at that. Right over the sea, incredible. The best thing to do here is walk around the boardwalk and then go out to the water. All right guys, I think our time's up. We have to go, let's rock and roll. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you. I love the hotel. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, here you go. <laughs> Pleasure. It's like a very tradition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this is the lobby guy that I didn't show you earlier. Love the lamps. And over here they also have a section where you can just chill out and relax. This is where you've been like hanging out all day. This guy's been having coffees here on the couch. Oh, it's perfect, dude. I can I can relax you forever, but we have to go. Yeah, next stop up below. So we're going through Vlora now, and on the way to Apollonia, we're gonna actually stop at a place called Museum Road. It's like a new area here in Vlora that has what? Uh, a great uh, old architecture with colorful houses, which nowadays has become a site of Vlora. Perfect, something new, something interesting. And this is Vlora. Lots of beautiful buildings. Everybody's out walking. Coffees, coffees, rakia. And more coffees and rakias everywhere. <laughs> And here we are in the center. So over here we have the Independence Square. In 1912, 28 November, Ismail Cemali, he, in the balcony of a second, of a two-floor building, he declared independence in front of thousands of Albanians. So from that, from that day, we have the borders we have nowadays. It depends from everyone. From everyone, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's right there, great. And is the street this way? Yeah. So is it Museum Street? Yeah, this is the... Uh, the newest part of Vlora, as I mentioned. So here they have created the old, the old style of Vlora. So Vlora was old like this. So they have, wow. they are bringing back the history. In fact, 
So it's much more nicer like this than uh, the huge buildings that we so far and I'm guessing people live upstairs and this, some of these are commercial spaces but everything's closed right now I'm guessing it's really early it's 8 30 yeah, in the morning it's really early, but it's not really yet uh, ready. ready because this is open a few months ago and people are renovating uh, renting opening some bars so they have to know what they can do so it's gonna be the place to come when you visit Vlora in like you know 2021 this will be all popping yeah bars Souvenir shops, I'm sure. Cafes. Shops. Beautiful. I love the colors. It feels very Italian, by the way. It's very similar style, like to Venice, some of the places Venice in Venice. Style. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, obviously the Venetians were Burano, here. Right? Burano, Burano style. Bur <laughs> <laughs> that is a street. Yeah, that's the newest boulevard. Lovely boulevard. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I mean, so unique, right? Yeah. It completely takes you back in time here in Vlora because yeah, everything and, else is like. And Vlora, and Vlora needed this because. It needed something else, something different from the only the sea because people, Laura now can have also tourists during the winter time, not only summer tourists. Exactly. So this is, this is aiming to bring people, you know, in those months that are colder. Yeah. Because people usually come to seaside, seaside. you know, yeah. Albanian Riviera just to go in the water. Yeah, 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 that's true. So not uh, especially to, ha to enjoy a coffee here or to see the sights of Laura, touristic sites. So how far to Apollonia? To Apollonia is half an hour from here. We'll take the highway, also a new highway. And we turn directly to Apollonia, a very, very huge and beautiful archaeological site. So this is the highway that connects Vlor and Tirana. And I think it actually goes up to Duras first, right? Yeah, Duras, so we have to cross here, uh, Lucia, then it's Duras. So it's completely flat. As you can see over here to the right, we have a little bit of hills mostly flat land we got olive groves we have salt flats to the left we just passed them and then the rest of this is farmland right yeah the rest is farmland so this was uh, the best for trading so the Apollonia where we're going now was a city for trading so the sea Adriatic Sea is just in front and uh, it makes the connection with uh, Apollonia and we have arrived to Apollonia yeah. ancient city it's massive it's massive so first you are going to see the outside uh, outside uh, archaeological sites and after that we're going inside the monastery which nowadays is converted into a museum and also there in the middle is a beautiful church okay so we are here uh, inside the Apollonia archaeological park here we have a map of uh, of the city of Apollonia as you can see it was huge for 60,000 people but nowadays uh, we have discovered only a little part where is the theater where this is the hill and a few parts that we're going to see like Portic, Agora and uh, many things. And we are now in the center of Apollonia. Over here we have a theater, we have a temple. Yeah, over there we have the temple or different called Buloterion, where the city council took place. So every meeting for the Apollonia ancient city was made inside that area. Over here we have the theater or differently called Odeon. So this was only for some shows, not for fights and etc. So the Odeon is a little different from the stadium. Yeah. I've seen it a few different times. I never really understand the difference, but I'm guessing it's just a smaller stage. Smaller stage, exactly. And then over here we have, you know, basically housing. We have columns, There, there were some pillars. Shops. There were shops. There were some shops uh, because we can see the dimensions and uh, archaeologists think that they were different, uh, different shops from that time. So, and these four, these four pillars were, is very interesting because we call it Arch of Triumph. So it was the gate to enter inside the Apollonia. Well, wow, it's different because I've never seen the gate like this close to the beginning of the temple. So that, that is because of the timing. So it depends what time uh, they built each, each another. Apollonia was built immediately after Duras, which was called Dura. And uh, what is interesting about Apollonia, it was, it was a, a great school for, for arts. And when Julius Caesar was killed, his nephew Octavius was studying here. What? Yes. Octavius? Yes, Octavius was studying here. Wow. Okay, so... so Apollonia uh, took the name because in, uh, in the world we, had, we have a lot of cities called at that time Apollonia. So we had 30 cities. So Apollonia was one of them. But first Apollonia was settled by Taulanti tribe, an Illyrian tribe in 6th century before Christ. Behind me we have an ancient storehouse and inside it I found a Hermes tortoise. This is a tortoise that is native here to Albania. We've seen so many crossing the road. So every time you see them, don't beat them up. 
I'm just moving him, okay? So I'm gonna move him somewhere so he can just go. Nobody. All right, let's go. So the Bulletarium, the Storehouse, and the Odeon are the main sites. Main okay? sites, outside in the park. Then we are going now where it was uh, built with the stones taken from this park. It was built a monastery. And nowadays there is still existing but converted into a museum. But the church is still uh, working. So there is a priest who stays and do the mass every, every day. So we're entering the monastery now. And in the middle, they have the St. Mary's Church. But what you'll notice here is that the stones on the floor are off from the city. Because in the third century, so there was an earthquake and the river changed direction. Yeah. And then they, you know, they lost their fame exactly. and they had to redo it. Yeah, people had to move from here because the, the city of, of Potolunia was not powerful economically anymore and not safe anymore. So they moved to another place. So over here we have St. Mary Church built in 17th century with, as you said, the road, but also the church was built with the stones taken from archaeological sites. So water was very important in the past, nowadays it's still important, but the rain collects the water in the canals that comes all inside this well, which is... Same time, you know, they have carved all this stone. Actually, what I love about this are the columns. Incredible. So, a sculpted eagle, I guess it's a man eagle, it's a lion. And over here we have some frescoes. 17th century frescoes right here, right? Yeah. And then this shows you what it used to be like, correct? Yeah. The paint, man, unfortunately it's falling apart, you know? This, these don't, like paintings don't last forever, but the sculptures do, they last an eternity. Church is more of a chapel, right? A lot smaller on the bottom, you can see, these are huge, massive stones from the archaeological site. A few of them, um, like the design here is a little different. This is a calendar, for David's calendar. So from, from this uh, calendar, mosaic with stones, they can calculate the days and uh, everything, hour, everything. But especially here is this, I call this is, we keep the statues here safe. All these statues are found in the park, archaeological park, which was discovered by Leon Ray, a French archaeologist during 1920s. So this, we have a lot of uh, faces, but the most interesting one are the statues over there. So some of these statues were part of tombs. As you can see the line, those two were part of two tombs. And over here we have this beautiful pottery, massive jars, like humongous. That one is like the biggest one I've ever seen. Over here we have a few different ones here that would store, you know, obviously wine. And then over here we have the beautiful statues. And unfortunately, all the heads have been cut off. So all the statues are from uh, second and third century. Roman statues, most of them. So we have female statues and male statues. Okay, so that's basically Apollonia, right? So you have the archaeological park, you can walk through it, it takes roughly 20 minutes, and you come over here to the monastery, you see the chapel, you see the statues, and if you want, you can go to the museum. We're gonna skip the museum because we're pressed with time right now. We have yeah. to continue, we have a few more stops before I have to go to the airport. And dude, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it, I'm hungry. I know we have a big surprise today. Yeah, it's a big surprise for everybody. So we are going to another monastery, Ardenitsa Monastery, very beautiful, we are still monks living there. It's a monk's monastery. And you said it's small, right? Like very small? Yeah, it's small. It's a ch with two churches, but it is important for Albanians because there took place the wedding of our national hero, George Castrel Skanderbeg. Great, so I made the full circle. I went to Kruja and now I came here. Yeah. And we made it to the top of the hill. Incredible. Okay, so this monastery was built first in 282 for in, a, in, a, in a honor of Andronikis II, which after he conquered Berati, so he wanted something for himself to, to, as a gift. And uh, after that, the first church is behind this St. Mary church, a 17th century, is that 10th century church. In that place took place the wedding of our national hero, George Castro Skanderbeg. So inside there are original frescoes, original uh, icons, iconostas, everything, but unfortunately we cannot record. But interesting else is here are living four monks. So they take care of the garden, of the church. They do, it, it works as a, as a functional monastery. Right now mass is taking place, you can hear. You're doing prayers, right? 
and you were saying something else that's yeah. famous because of uh, the library? Yeah, during, se during 17th century this was uh, a famous library with thousands of volumes, but unfortunately all were burned during the fights between countries. And inside there are original frescoes from Sography Brothers, very beautiful icon. And that was the monastery guys, very very small. I mean you can only get to like two sections, you can see the older church, the main church, and you can go inside where mass is not taking place. And now we're headed one hour more north to a delicious restaurant. I'm excited. This is gonna be the best. This is gonna be the most unique experience. The highlight of had. the restaurant. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Alright guys, let's go. We are here in National Caravasta National Park, which is famous for having uh, hundreds of pelicans. So the famous bird pelicans. Now we have a place where they can stay alive for long for long time. And in a few minutes we'll reach a restaurant which is middle of this forest. We made it, we made it. And the, the staff here is really welcoming. Great. I'm excited dude. Fish, let's eat. Alright, so the owner here wants to show me something. He's like, come with me, come with me. Oh, I'm going to the kitchen? Wow, look at this fire. And all this is what? It's fish. Wow, fish, prawns. This is like unfinished fish. Oh man, look at this. This is fish heaven. Fish heaven. Fish heaven, man. So that's the surprise for you, last lunch in Albania. Actually, the surprise is how he brings the fish. Yeah, that's, that's another surprise. That's another surprise. Yeah. So this is uh, basically... a winter, winter place, so okay. in fact they have put all the tables outside, but winter, so this is like a traditional restaurant. People awesome. can write their names in the walls, so it's like a wow. free... So you feel like at home, you know? Yeah, this is like all, all antiques, right? Antiques, yeah. Here we have old TVs, radio, here a little violin, and knives, guns, I mean, this is awesome, dude. So this is Ali Kali restaurant, where the best and most significant of the restaurant is serving with a horse. So he'll catch the fish with a horse, and in a, in a zgara we call it, and he'll bring it here in our table. But another best thing is that you can eat as much as you can. There is not uh, like a one fish with some side dish, so he brings to you five, six, seven, twenty fishes if you can. Love this restaurant already. I mean, just walking through the grounds, this place is epic. The inside, you have the antiques, you also have the fire there where they're cooking the fish, they put it into the the thing where they close it, the clamper. So that's how they cook fish, obviously, on the grill. They also have shrimp, they have salads, just a lot of delicious seafood. And out here in the terrace, you have like two big sections, right? So over there, it's a, you know more of a square section. This is more just a long section full of tables. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like 20 different tables. It is packed already. They were telling us this is nothing. It's gonna get really, really packed and they're gonna like put on a fish feast. What's the most exciting part about this place is that he's coming on a horse, literally gonna serve us on a horse. Bring it right here to our table, throw it on the table. Crazy. Dude, that's insane. Grapes, Raki? Raki Monofera. This is uh, blackberry, wild berry. So here we have the Raki, blueberry Raki. So he just brought the whole bottle. He goes, drink as much as you want. That's it. Yeah, blackberry, blackberry. And this is just regular grapes. Woo! You would think this is water. The problem is, <laughs> sometimes you drink it really fast. You're like, oh my god, it's not, it's not water. So I'm gonna serve us some. My friend Gazor. Gazor. Mm, this is my favorite Raki. Blackberry. Alright guys, my turn. Wow. So smooth. Cold. Mmm. So fruity. Dude, I can drink a lot more of that. So here we have the yogurt sauce. Yogurt sauce, fresh salad with tomatoes, cucumber and, and onions and green salad. And the most delicious one is this one here, which is uh, cheese with paper, with pickles, pickles paper. So that's perfect. Uh, we Albanian mass use this to drink raki others. A little raki, a little cheese with paper, it's perfect. All right, my friends, we are starting off with yogurt, salad, french fries, cheese with peppers, which is, looks so good. And here, the fergesa, fergesa, the best. This is the most delicious thing ever. Wow, it's been a while. Yeah. We haven't had it in a few days. Because this is for the middle, middle of the, of Albania, I know. French fries always with the yogurt. Some olive oil. Olive oil too. Yeah. For this. What's up right here? Wow. 
Wow, amazing. And the reason they bring it in this container is because it's really fresh. Look at this, the cheese. Mm. Oh my God. It's like spicy cheese. Oh my God. It's incredible. You do that? Mmm. Oh wow. Delicious. I mean, the bread is good for one thing, for these sauces, right? The cheese one is crazy. And I love how they serve you. They just come here and just keep serving you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Delicious goat cheese. Mmm. Pepper. Super spicy. And this is the fregesa. I personally love it with bread. You can eat it straight, however you want it. It's like a non-stop feast, bro. Crazy. This is just the appetizers. Mmm. There's like regular white bread, but for them, putting it on the grill changes the whole flavor. It's not too toasted, it's just a little doughy, it's still a little soft. The outside's crispy. So this is grilled cheese with tomatoes. The owner's over here running around with like 20 fish, just serving everybody. He does it special for, you know, special guests, the horses. Not everybody gets it. Mm. This is an amazing grilled cheese with tomato. This is how this guy delivers our food. This is crazy. On the horse, bro? This is insane. Wow. Wow. It's a huge fish, bro. That's the first for me. Somebody delivering food on a horse, especially seafood, fish. Dude, this fish, what did he bring us? This is like the monster fish. That's a monster, that's a one kilogram fish. <laughs> Unlimited, never ending. So get in here, get up with the spines, with the bones. Mm. Grilled fish. Just gotta pull this out. This is all bones, right? Bunch of bones, to take out the spine. And then in here, you have all the flesh. Look at this. Just gotta be careful, right? Grab a nice piece of flesh. Mmm, delicious. Adriatic fish. Oh my god. What a monster. Is it like 1.5 kilo this thing? Dude, one kilo. One kilo fish is huge. Mm -hmm. mm. Some bones. Another crunchy skin, man. And this part? Oh, wow. Yeah. Got to off the spine. Mm. So nice. Mm. A little burnt. Perfect. Monster head. Monster. Mm hmm. Ah. Yeah. The, the flesh is falling. The flesh is just falling. I'm down for shrimp. Oh my god. Super, it's important. Oh, yeah. Super, super. Look at the flesh here, guys. Look how much flesh. No bones here. At this point, I'm eating Bengali style. Mm. Mm. Eating fish with your hands? I don't normally do that. But, because I'm taking this apart, I gotta go in here with my hands and get everything I can with no bones. Oh my god.
Yeah. What a delicious fish, bro. What fish is this? I think it's uh, sea bass. No sea bass? Mm -hmm. It's wild. Wild sea bass, huh? Yeah. Super tasty. <laughs> Neither. Yeah, so my friend's coming around with more fish. More fish and shrimp. I don't know if I can do another fish. I'm like extremely full. I mean, we ate so much. That was one kilo. One kilo of sea bass. You can either use your hands or fork. For this one, I'm going to use my hands. Whoa, the head just flew away. So, cut this up. Delicious shrimp. Hava shrimp. Mmm. Oh my god. Get some of this. Still hot. Yeah. Damn. A second fish. It's like, look at this guy. <laughs> oh, it's still so hot. So get in here. Oh, break it up. Dude, oh yes, yes, yes. Mm. Obviously, there's a lot of spines in here. So you have to go in here and like slowly pull them out. So here we go, like this. And what fish is this? I don't even know guys, this is just like... This is small sea bass? I mean the other one was huge. Mm. The flesh. My butter. Wow. Incredible food, man. Mm-hmm. Wow, man. I'm gonna remember this restaurant. This restaurant is up there with one of my favorites of all time. Whole experience. All right, my friends. We couldn't leave here without trying their amazing yogurt with honey. This is super fresh yogurt. Look at this. <laughs> and the honey. Okay, bro. Let's try it. Let's try it. Mm. Wow, that honey. Yes. Like usually it's like more yogurt than honey, but mm -hmm. this is more honey than yogurt. This is like straight up a honey feast. <laughs> honey heaven. Mm. Wow. What I usually do is I mix it, right? This is something I eat along the Balkans. Every country I've had it, yeah. you know? You mix. Yeah, and then if you want, you can add some nuts, so add some walnuts, add some pecans, whatever yeah. you want. Yeah, yeah. This restaurant is phenomenal. What's the name again? It's Ali Kali. Ali, Ali Kali. Kali. Yeah. So it's gonna be right here. So today was awesome. We started off in Valor at my hotel, Bologna Hotel. Really funny name. I'm Italian, so I love it. Right there on the boardwalk in the center of the city. They have 40 rooms, great breakfast, and it's in the center of the city. You can't beat the location. At night, you can walk around, explore, eat from there, and you're always gonna be in the center. That's the best thing about this hotel. For me, it's always about location, location, location. Okay, then after that, we drove over to one of the newest attractions in yeah, Bloor, which Lord. is the Museum Street. Museum Street. So basically, yeah. it's a living museum. It's a living museum. So they just built now the facades of the houses, traditional houses, two floors uh, from the past. So they renovated and make using the same architecture. So that makes Laura more and more visited, more delicious, uh, more interesting. Yeah, yeah. It just is another attraction, another place yeah. for people to mingle, right? Yeah eat, drink, explore, and converse. Then after that, we went to Apollonia, Apollonia, historical site. It's one of the most important sites in Albania for ancient history. Exactly. I think it's Butrint and this one are the two yeah. most important. This is a candidate, official candidate to be part of UNESCO. Okay. Very soon I'm, I'm thinking that like yeah. they'll be part of it. They yeah. deserve it. Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is it's, it's not completely excavated, so it's still very virgin. Even though it was discovered like 92 years ago, it's still like in its primitive state of being excavated and being explored in terms of bringing it out. You know, they're gonna eventually, if once it becomes part of UNESCO, they'll clean it up and make it even better and go through and find everything, right? And then after that, we saw a monastery, which is like famous for- I think it's a monastery for where it took place the wedding of our national hero, George Castro Skanderbeg. Exactly. In 15th century. 15th century. I mean, if you guys don't know about him, he's the one who united the princes and princes and princesses of Albania exactly to fight against the Ottomans. Even though he failed and they were under the rule of Ottoman for like 300 more years, he was a national hero because he was the one who said, "Enough is enough. We're not letting him in." Right. And then after that, we came here to this amazing restaurant, 
What an experience. The best experience, yeah. The best the experience. Best. I mean, even I'm Albanian and it's like this, I never seen before. Yeah, I mean, dude, I've never seen this. And the food was amazing, but just like walking in, seeing the atmosphere, the owner's super friendly. He's like, take me into the kitchen, he lets me see everything, and then he comes on a horse and brings me fish. I mean, this is awesome. Awesome. Dude, and this is only like an hour, hour and a half from Tirana, right? Hour and, uh, one hour and a half, exactly. One hour and a half, yeah. 90 minutes from Tirana. So guys, if you love this video, give me a thumbs up. Let me comment below, subscribe my channel for more awesome travel content. And we'll see you in the next travel food adventure. Somewhere. I leave to Albania. I leave Albania right now. Yeah. <laughs> you always stay longer, man. I know, man. I'll stay for the Rakia. <laughs> <laughs>